So, Professor Neil Tarrett, you examined the rubble that came from the World Trade Center. What did you find in it? Well, in there we find remains of what we characterize as a thermitic material. And this is a very energetic material which can be used either for melting iron or it can be designed as an explosive. So what effect would the nanothermite have had on the collapse of the towers on September the 11th? Actually, within the group of authors behind this paper, which we published in April, there are diverging opinions about what this nanothermite was used for. And in my opinion, we should not speculate in a, in a scenario for the demolition. There's no doubt that the three towers were demolished on 9-11. Uh, so, um, but beyond that, there is very solid evidence for that some thermite has been used for melting the steel beams. We should not, I do not know, we do not know if the thermite that we have found is the same thermite which has been used for melting the beams. It's very, very possible the different varieties was used, and I personally am certain that uh, conventional explosives were used too in abundance. And when you say in abundance, how much do you mean? Tons. Hundred tons. So many, many, many tons. We're not just talking about nanothermite, in fact, we're talking about both nanothermite and conventional explosives used in large quantities. Yeah, but we have not found remains or transits of conventional explosives. Actually, we have suggested and recommended to NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, that they should look for remains or traces of explosives, and they have refused to do so every time. They have not investigated it. And in terms of the nanothermite, the traces of which you did find, uh, what are the possible explanations for its presence in the World Trade Center? I mean, could it have been in the airplanes? Is it, could it have been a naturally occurring substance in any way? Well, I, the two last questions or options I can definitely rule out. It cannot have come from the airplanes. And, well, if it had been there on beforehand, those who put it there, I th urge them to step forward and tell us how and why it got there. Uh, one thing which has been very mentioned frequently in the discussion following our publication is that this could be the primer paint which was applied to the steel beams in order to prevent corrosion. And uh, much of the, many of the ingredients are the same in terms of iron oxide, as I told you which is the red color you see on steel beams usually when it's protected, it's the, the iron oxide. So some of the chemicals in there are the same. But the composition of the primer paint used, there are two very good reasons for this not being paint, in my opinion. One is that the, the, the composition, chemical composition of the paint, primer paint used in World Trade Center, according to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is vastly different from what we, we are seeing. To be specific, I say we are missing large amounts of chromium and, and um, uh, zinc and magnesium. Next, which can be understood by everyone, is that the paint applied on the steel beams are stable to elevated temperatures. NIST did experiments with the steel beams because they wanted to use the, the appearance of the paint as a measure for the temperature the steel beams had been exposed to. And let me be specific. So when you heat up this steel beam at 250 degrees centigrade, it starts cracking. Now this is because the steel expands more than the paint. So they get what they call mud cracks and it keep on cracking until a temperature about 650 degrees where it starts peeling off, forming scales. This continues to about 800 degrees when, uh, when this scaling becomes extensive, uh, what you say, excessive. But it does not burn. So the paint on the steel beams is stable beyond 800 degrees centigrade. Now, the stuff we have found ignites at 430 degrees centigrade. So, 
it is not the primer paint. So what I can say is, is this nanothermite? Well, it quacks like a duck, it waddles like a duck, it looks like a duck, maybe it's a duck. This is all we can say. It's now around three months since your article was first published. What's the response been like? I understand that this is one of the first times that you've been interviewed for an English-speaking audience. For the, uh, what you call the mainstream media, it has been dead silence except for two interviews I've done in Danish television, uh, and uh, which has taken off on the internet to an extent that I had not anticipated, but on a on official, organized level, it's a roaring silence, I must say. Just going back a bit, how did, what first piqued your interest in 9-11? In how did you first come to examine the rubble, and what did you expect to find? It goes back about two and a half years, I think, when I accidentally saw Building 7. And to those who do not know this, we should make it absolutely straight that there were two airliners but there were three skyscrapers. Most people associate World Trade Center with the Twin Towers. But World Trade Center was a center. There were seven buildings. But no, and the towers have number one and number two. Now number three, number four, number five and number six were relatively small buildings from nine to twenty-two stories. But building seven was a huge building, close to two hundred meters high, forty-seven stories, with, with a, a footprint of the level of a small soccer field. And it came down twenty minutes after five in the afternoon. This was seven hours after the North Tower collapsed. And I, I saw this accidentally, and I said, what is this? This is World Trade Center, what? And I had to see it again, because I, as most people, I didn't know about Building 7. And it is going down completely symmetrically in 6.5 seconds. It's going down with this zoop. And as a scientist, you're trained to watch your environment in an analytical fashion, you always think, now how does this happen, how does this happen? And this I just couldn't understand and cope with. Why should this building come down, which I've never heard about before in itself, I think this is, should raise some eyebrows, actually. Why haven't I heard about Building 7 before? And then it's coming down like this with no apparent reason. So I had to push the button again and again. And it took me weeks actually to digest this. And I think it, this is common to most persons to realize what you have seen. But once you have realized this, there is no way back. So you can either speak out or you can live in shame. And from that on I got more, more interested. And I found uh, uh, that the evidence for controlled demolition is overwhelming. The evidence for thermite is also first I told you that the thermite reaction produced molten iron. Now molten iron was pouring out of one of the towers. Molten iron was in pools of molten iron under in the rubble after after 9/11 uh, for weeks and months. The surface temperature was 735 degrees after three days of heavy showers. It took them three months to put out the fire. It was declared officially extinguished on December the 20th. Now this is kind of fire. <laughs> and, and the point is that the thermite kept on reacting. This was a bitch's brew of thermite chemistry for three months. Very sophisticated. Very complicated. It's